What's up? Monshell here today for another session of Get Schooled. Did you do your homework? Are you ready for today's pop quiz? Okay, here we go. What are the different pawn technologies? Here's a hint. Pawn Evolution is not an Xbox game. Is it A, E-Pawn, G-Pawn, B-Pawn, and F-Pawn? B, console, online, and handheld? C, B-Pawn, E-Pawn, G-Pawn, and WDM-Pawn? Or D, WGN and UPN? We be oopin'. <laughs> Don't know the answer? Don't worry. Sit back, relax, it's time to get schooled. Hi, I'm Dave Morphus, and today I'm here to talk to Tim Dwaren about WDM Pond. I think the first question we need to define is what exactly is WDM Pond and how is it relevant to the industry? Sure. WDM Pond is really the idea of putting multiple wavelengths onto an existing passive optical network. Today's PON networks tend to have um, something like one downstream and one upstream wavelength. They may have an additional wavelength in the downstream for RF video, um, but they are limited in terms of the number of wavelengths they support. Service providers are always looking for opportunities to expand the utility of the fiber infrastructure they may have in place. And WDM PON is the idea that I can put something like 32 wavelengths down and maybe 32 wavelengths up on that same pond fiber that they may have installed or thinking about installing for a deep fiber access network. Are there other pond technologies out there and is WDM pond an extension or an evolution of those or is it something new? Today there's really three different pond technologies available in the marketplace. You have B pond, G pond, and E pond. Both B pond and G pond were developed by the full service access network uh, committee of the ITU. EPON was developed as part of the IEEE activity around 802.3AH specification for fiber in the last mile. Um, when you look at the idea of multiple wavelengths moving beyond two or three wavelengths on a PON fiber, that's really tied to, um, so far, uh, FSAN and the work coming out of the FSAN committee as uh, vendor and service provider partners look to evolve beyond GPON and where we go from there to increase the bandwidth and the utility uh, of the fiber that is out there. From an infrastructure and equipment perspective, what type of equipment is needed to deploy WDM PON and is it the same equipment that's needed for GPON? Um, it is exactly the same type of equipment. In today's PON infrastructure you tend to have an OLT or an optical line terminal at the uh, central office deployment location and then the unit that's serving the customer is typically referred to as an ONT or an optical networking terminal. So WDM PON would use those same OLT and ONT concepts. Um, from a Telabs portfolio perspective, the 8865 service aware OLT and the Telabs 1150 multi-service access platform, both of those were designed with the high bandwidth, high switching capacity capabilities that would lend themselves to an evolution from GPON to Lambda PON. That said, those uh, devices could be upgraded and, and would be upgraded for Lambda PON support with a software upgrade and a line card module that would go from a, a single wavelength type of module we use in BPON and GPON today to something that would be multiple wavelengths in a Lambda, Lambda PON network. In addition to that, there's a lot of work going on right now in the area of um, the wavelength grid that we would use for those multiple wavelengths. Uh, that work uh, is predominantly focused around the idea of having GPON ONTs remain compatible with a Lambda PON OLT network. Um, with that as the case, a GPON ONT that's already installed in a service provider could continue to be utilized and deployed literally side by side with a Lambda PON capable ONT in the future. Are there end user services driving GPON and what will eventually be WDM PON? Absolutely. Um, service providers are looking to evolve their networks and the services they offer from uh, voice and high-speed internet to video and, and multimedia type of entertainment. Um, when you look at uh, where we're heading in terms of increased high-definition content, more personalization in terms of the consumer being able to get the, the type of content when he wants, where he wants, and how he wants it, 
all of that leads to uh, more and more bandwidth demands on the network. And so uh, uh, service providers certainly talking about uh, evolution to GPON and deep fiber access networks like that. And then uh, some are beginning to look at where do we go from here in terms of GPON and, uh, and the continued service mix, uh, mostly driven by video and personalized type of entertainment services. What role then is Telebs playing in PON technology and PON evolution? Having shipped over a million ONTs to some of the world's largest service providers, Telebs clearly has a significant leadership and uh, role to play in terms of evolving access networks. Telebs is really doing that in several different ways. Um, we continue to institutionalize the lessons learned and the things we, we have uh, picked up from over three years of, of deploying PON infrastructure and that's reflected in our, in our fifth generation of ONTs and the subsequent products we're bringing to market. In addition to that, um, we are an active participant in the Full Services Access Network, or FSAN, of the ITU, uh, where a lot of standards body activity and future evolution of PON and PON um, uh, specifications is occurring. And then finally, um, Telabs is funding a significant amount of research, both at some universities around the world and here at Telabs, uh, in the area of uh, PON evolution, including WDM PON and multiple wavelengths on a PON fiber. You done already? That wasn't too hard, was it? The correct answer is C. B PON, E PON, G PON, and WDM PON. I'll give you extra credit if you were open. You know you were open. If you missed the answer, your homework is to download the cheat sheet at inspirethenewlife.com. Come back tomorrow for another quiz. I'll be waiting. Oh, my God.